So, what's up guys, um, the commentary that I was going to do this week, I'm thinking about just saving for next week, one, because I haven't finished it, and two, because I'd really like to, you know, settle everything, I want to get everything really made up and presented well, since with the liberalism video I did, and I really didn't do it with any, um, I didn't do it with a blog, and to be honest, I don't know if I'm ever going to go back and redo the liberalism video, I might, but I'm going to, at some point, do a liberalism blog, but I am doing, starting to do a communist socialist blog to do for the communist socialist uh, political breakdown video, which... Hopefully I can get out by next week. If not, we'll get it by ne by the week after. In fact, I might just save it from... No, I would have to do it by next week if I want to do it for my birthday. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out. But, uh, and then for my birthday, hopefully I will have something special that I'll talk about, something to do. Um, but yeah... I digress. What I really wanted to get into was my discussion um, this week that I had, because this one kind of trumped a lot of things, took up a lot of my time on um, Friday night. Uh, it was this argument that I had with um, Robert Stacy McCain, uh, who is a, um, who's a blogger and journalist. Um, for the American um, Spectator, and he also has his own blog called The Other McCain, um, which, if you're conservative or just have a tendency to want to go check it out, I will post the links to it. Just because I'm biased doesn't mean I'm going to not show something that just because it's conservative. I don't believe in censorship, so... Anyway... The whole thing is, is that, um, is that Robert Stacy McCain, some of you may know him because he's this kind of famous, um, blogger and journalist for, for conservatives, and, um, you know, yada, yada, yada. He claims that John McCain is a distant cousin because they have a common ancestor from, like, 1830-whatever, you know, he's called John McCain his crazy cousin John you know, all that crap, but, um, anyway, but yeah, very famous conservative blogger, and then, um, uh, well, not very famous, but a, a well-known blogger, and then the other person's name was Beth Harper, who some of you, if you pay attention to conservatism and people like that, she is a um, she's a statistical and research analyst, you know, quote unquote. But she does not appear to be a very good one, because as my breakdown with them went the other day, we got into talking about how my views on Caitlin Hunt had obviously changed. You know, I don't support her anymore, much like Anonymous and many other activists no longer support her anymore. But yeah, she goes, you know, but you know. That, you know, I've got a whole video on that, um, but we had, we started talking about that, LGBT rights, which obviously conser a lot of conservatives think LGBT rights is not important, you know, and then they start chewing on my definition of equality and stuff like that, they, um, uh, the, because then we started going into the fact that I told them I was a socialist, which may have been harebrained on my spot, but it would have been one thing to discuss socialism from an intellectual level, but they decided to take it to a childish level in which they called socialism for losers. Now, normally I get that a lot. I don't take offense to it. And in this case, I kind of did. I mean, not so much to, not so much really, but it's just that I felt 
well, maybe they need to be educated a little bit. The thing is, with conservatives, especially those that are twice your age, they tend to think they know it all, and they think that, you know, being, you know, being educated by a person of, you know, a person half their age, they find that rather insulting, I think, and they also kind of laugh at it because they, they're like, well, who is this kid to think that, you know, he knows it all, you know, he doesn't know a th damn thing. Well, it's true. There's a lot of things that I don't know. Political-wise, however, political government, you know, so, you know, a lot of that stuff, I am very knowledgeable about. I mean, I've been studying a lot of this crap since I was 16, 15, 16, and I've been studying history since I was a little boy, since I was probably old enough to read. So I've been, which was probably, what, seven, six, seven? I, I mean, really, I've been old enough, I, ever since I was a little kid, I've been doing this. And it's, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that over time I got interested in politics, and I started studying that and researching history more in depth. Therefore, I know quite a lot about what I'm talking about when I do this. And even when I even when I do or don't, I still do research behind it. I even grab articles that I do for all that. Back on the story, though. So we have this entertaining argument over socialism. And they call it for losers, and they say that, oh, socialism killed this many people, to which I responded, yeah, but, um, but capitalism has killed just as many and quite frankly more than socialism ever had. I mean capitalism killed so many people and enslaved so many people under its system. We, I mean, an example of this would be the slave days. That was the, the time where so many people were stolen from their, their home territories, enslaved, and basically tortured, killed, beaten, abused, everything for 400 years, you know, and even still remnants of it, this inequality and this abuse ha continues even to this day, even 150 years after pe these, uh, after the slaves were freed, it was, abs it, what happened during that time was absolutely horrific. Then, you know, um, you know, there's so many other examples that could go along with it, and I did provide a couple more examples, um, <laughs> to which all they responded was, yeah, 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 socialism is, is all this great thing, capitalism is horrible because it killed all these people, you know, they basically were just laughing it off, they didn't want to hear it, which is, again, typical of conservatives who don't want to, you know, hear the truth behind their crony, you know, fascist capitalism. So they went into this whole spiel, you know, and every time I kept on destroying them. I kept coming back with with an intelligent argument and basically, you know, asking them, you know, where are you getting their source your sources from? You know, where are you getting this information from? Never once did they answer that question looking back at that. Um they also um, had uh, when I mentioned the fact that if you've run if, if you've ever went and checked PolitiFact well here's the thing they seem to think that PolitiFact is very biased and goes more to, and leans towards the Democratic Party which is insane because the PolitiFact is a very reliable reputable source I mean I've always told people go check your sources through PolitiFact. There's so many people that I've been told to go through PolitiFact. So many people that I, and not, just, and not because I live in California. I mean, I've been told this by people that live in other long distance states and stuff like that, go, to, go check PolitiFact. Because PolitiFact is a non-biased, non-partisan source of information. I've seen them destroy Democrats, Republicans, independence they basically just 
go back and forth telling the cold hard facts. I mean, essentially, that's kind of what Al, I think Al Jazeera and a lot of, and, and um, Huffington Post and a lot of the, well, even though Huffington Post is even, is liberal, but that's a bad example. But there's a lot of big name sources, I think, that do, to at least some extent, check PolitiFact. Why? Because PolitiFact is non-biased and non-partisan. It is not a, it is not a, um, it's not a, a partisan source. To claim that it, it sides with the Democrats is insane. Have you seen some of the shit that they said about, uh, about the Democrats? Which is all true, by the way. I mean, it's obviously true. But, go, I mean, seriously, have you even looked at PolitiFact? I mean, that's one of the things that really got me. They don't, they, they just automatically discredited PolitiFact because, you know, just because what? You've probably seen some stuff or heard about some stuff that was said negatively towards your party. They say it about both parties, and just because they said something negative about your party doesn't mean that it suddenly makes it, you know, biased towards you. It's ridiculous. Everybody, it's like, if you can't take criticism, then fuck off. You know, that is the whole point of politics. You're going to get criticized, and you're going to get praised one way or another. And whether you like either or not, it's going to happen. I mean, that's just part of what it is. But you can't just suddenly turn all, you know, gung-ho about it just because a couple of things were said negatively about your party and it hurt your partisan egos. You know, the Democratic Party gets probably, you know, gets just as much flack as the Republicans. But you don't see the Democrats, go, you know, or at least not too many of them anyway. Well, actually, that's not true. I take that back. You do see some Democrats, like the Republicans, that get all up in anger and say, you know, and stuff like that. But never once, though, have I seen a, any liberal blogger come out and say, oh, they're biased, they're siding with the Republicans. But you always see it every time with the Republicans, with conservatives, who are always, as soon as something negative is said about that, they always have to say, oh, it's the liberal media. First of all, the media is not liberal in any way. The, li the media is centrist and it's and it's centralized corporatism I mean that's kind of the whole mentality of the media is that it tries to brainwash manipulate and control the public and that is exactly what it's done through corporate capitalism so it's it's just one of those really interesting arguments you get into with conservatives they just absolutely don't want to hear it and they always and what they do want to hear is what they is what they obviously want to hear and any th time you challenge what they what they believe you're automatically chewed out even if you're in their own party you get chewed out for it i mean think of the insanity of that you get ch you basically get um, blackballed by your own people if you say something wrong let alone if you were of some different ideology than them. I mean, that's just, that's not freedom. That's not being a conservative. You're just being a plain asshole. You're being a fascist. Because that is the definition of fascism, is when you are basically monopolizing your own power, and you're basically saying, and what you say is, is all that matters. You know, and that if you don't stand with us on this, then we're just going to basically off you. That's fascism. That's totalitarianism. And that is what's inherently been growing in the Republican Party and with conservative ideology. It's just been that. So eventually, Robert Stacy McCain, he signs off, um, and I end up continuing with Beth Harper, who just every single time I present an argument she always you know she always would present some baseless assertion I mean McCain did it too 
but you know at least McCain to the point got to the point where he just said you know what I'm gonna just bow out and agree to disagree and with all due respect I respect you for that Mr. McCain at least you and I can agree to disagree I wish I could say the same for Miss Harper but I couldn't um, but anyway Harper and I continued she and I basically got down to the point where she were because she criticized my age bracket which again typical of a conservative to attack a younger person who has you know who surpri who may surprise you by being smarter than most you know than the stereotypical young person of today a person that actually knows his politics knows his government knows the Constitution like the back of his freaking hand by the way what the hell is that um, and also and also knows his history you know knows a lot about what he's talking about and then all of a sudden you're intimidated you become intimidated you become scared you become frazzled and because of that you have nothing in intelligent to say but a baseless assertion or a quick jump to you know or a quick jump to a hollow th um, hollow attack such as my age you were calling me a child and you were, you know, saying that I knew nothing. Well, first of all, you said that I knew nothing, and then you also claimed that I um, thought I knew it all. Well, I don't know it all, but but I definitely know a lot about what I'm talking about. And again, if you want me to provide my sources to everything, I can do that too. I have videos galore on my channel that you can easily access. They're available to the public all the time, and I always and I almost always provide links to my sources. Always, and they're always run through very reputable sources. Now, granted, yes, I do use Huffington Post too, but Huffington Post is very reliable um, because they, even though. Ariana Huffington is the most liberal motherfucking idiot on the planet. They have independent journalists with their people that often do really good research. I mean, I, I quote Al Jazeera more often, you know, which now that Al Jazeera is launched in the U.S., I might be using more often. Um, but I'll, but it's just absolutely crazy, Ariana. Um, you know it, uh, that it's just crazy that Beth Harper she tried to argue all this and then after criticizing criticizing me she decided you know I decided to kind of nitpick at her credibility just a little bit saying that she wasn't obviously was not a very good research analysis um, do, well I don't know if I got that far to it but I know that I criticized her credibility just a little bit because and I could have actually criticized her about her being a research analysis, but which she obviously was horrible at. But you know, especially considering she's done, she said that she's done this for 25 years. Well, if you were such a great research analysis and st statistical and research analysis, why would you not go back and like check your sources? I mean, don't just go to Fox News. Don't just you know, go to like, you know, these conservative places. You go to liberal sources too. Go to liberal sources. Check um, socialist sources even, like, like the Kasama Project. Very good source. It's a social. It's made by socialists, but it's a very good source of information. Check Think Progress, um, Forward Progressives. Um, what's a good one? that I could say. Definitely Al Jazeera. Try Al Jazeera. Um, Russia Today. Um, I always hate saying BBC, but go with BBC because they do somewhat decent research. Um, but yeah, there, there's so many different sources you can go to to research, look up articles, and do form an opinion. I mean, hell, don't be a biased idiot when it comes to your 
journalism or statistical research um, analysis don't just don't just because of your conservative but you know ideology and fear of being outcasted by your party do not be, be a, do not be afraid to be independent I'm a socialist I get called out by my fellow socialists all the time but I have but my thing is not to be a is not to be completely ideologically biased I put my spin my ideological bias spin on my articles but I do but when I do my videos I present them at first in a very truthful light because I will take sources that I've gotten that are very reputable very great sources put them forward then only at the end will I put my spin on it that's what journalism is if you want to be an independent journalist it tell, tell your people the facts tell them the facts now if you want to be more like me put your spin at the end of the article don't just do it for the full article because that just makes you look like a biased bitch put it toward towards the end of your article but tell the facts first I mean tell the facts and then give your own opinion at the very end of it I mean still it's gonna seem biased in the end but the very point of the core point of this is that still the people get the facts first you know and even and besides most people nowadays don't read full articles anyway they'll just read the first part anyway so why not just give let them read the facts first you know and let them make their own opinion that's just where I said they don't need to read your own opinion they just need to read the read the facts and form their own I mean that's really why America is fa was founded so that we would be able to give our own opinion to be free to speak what we want to say that's the point so at the end of all this Beth Harper gets pissed and she basically just tells me good night to which I had to say bye bye thanks for playing with all that said and done I resorted to somewhat of some childish tax tactics but when you resort to childish tactics yourself and then call me a child and then try to use your age as if it's supposed to mean anything like it's the superiority complex that you have and you claim that just because you're older and that you've been doing something for 25 years or more or whatever the case may be and just because you have a blog or you're a analysis just because all that entails something does not mean that you know jack shit about anything I can be talking out of my own ass too I mean just because I've been doing this for you know just because I've done a lot of my own research and been doing this um, blog and stuff like that for what now two two years something like that um, just because I've been doing this does not mean that it means anything I've just been doing this personally on the level that you know I love doing what I'm doing but I do keep my research very fact based biased at the end yes but it but I maintain a factual based thing I provide the article so people can go to them I give them the facts first and present my opinion later I do this all in the efforts of educating people to free think that is the point of being in that we as anybody that's involved in being in journalism is to provide the facts to people so that they can free think and be individuals and form their own opinion just because you know something just because you think you know something just because you've been doing something for so long just because you've reached a certain age does not mean that you are this wise wizard of knowledge they always say with age comes with comes beauty 
and with age comes wisdom. I would have to say that the, the beauty part is what, you know, for some people, some people get better with age, some people don't. That's the same with, with wisdom. Some people do get wiser because they learn more, and some people remain ignorant. The people like Beth Harper continue to remain ignorant. People like Mr. McCain may remain ignorant, but at least they will agree to disagree. And perhaps maybe even with that, they will might even do their further research. Now again, I don't really see that happening with Mr. McCain either. But my point is, is just because you are older than me does not mean you know any more than I do. From what I've seen, you know probably about as much about politics as I do. Actually, you probably know little more than I do, so that's why I'm trying, I was trying to educate you, because you obviously know nothing about socialism. You know quite a lot. You have a very twisted mentality of capitalism, and you seem to know some basics of everything, but you also don't know jack shit about capitalism, and your views on that are very biased. They always say that ignorance, you know, breeds that type of, that type of shit, and that's very true. So with that in mind, I just kind of wanted to kind of explain that because this is what I'm going to, because this is going to transition us into next week, um, hopefully next week. God, I got work to do. Um, but we'll transition this into next week when I go into detail about communism and socialism. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and I want to thank you for watching this week's NorCal Nick commentary. Peace. Four days, four, 14.